In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the GSAP object and give you a visual overview of tweens and timelines. If you've used any version of GSAP in the past 12 years, or maybe you've read about it, you may have heard about tools like Tween Lite, Tween Max, Timeline Lite, and Timeline Max. Well, in the new version of GSAP 3.0, they're all going away and being replaced by the GSAP object. The GSAP object is your access point to everything the engine does. It can create animations, configure settings, register plugins, eases, and effects, and also gives you global control over all animations and so much more. Being a beginner course, I'm going to really focus on the create animations part. The GSAP object has three main methods for creating tweens and optionally adding them to timelines. There's GSAP.2, gsap.from, and gsap.from2. You'll be surprised at how much you can do with these three little methods. Before we get too technical, let me show you exactly what tweens and timelines are and what they can do. In its simplest form, a tween can change a single property of a single object over time. So let's say we have this star on the stage here and we want to move it over to the right. We might write code that looks like this. This is GSAP's to method and basically what it does is it takes the object that we specify and it animates its properties to the values we specify. So in this case here, I'm just going to point out that the first parameter is what we refer to as the target, all right? And in this case, we're passing in a very simple string selector that's going to select every element with a class of star. Next, we have the vars object, which is going to contain the properties that we're animating and a series of special properties that might tell us how the tween is going to run. In this example right here, duration is considered a special property because it's not a property that's being animated. It simply defines how long the tween is going to run. We'll get into a bunch more special properties real soon. Right now, we're just going to move this star along the x-axis, 750 pixels, with a duration of 3 seconds. The x property here is GSAP's shorthand for the CSS Translate X. To see how this works, I'm just going to press a little magic button here. Ah! There we go, our star moves. Now to explain a little bit more about the power of tweens, let me move this code out of the way. Aha! What I have here is a little visualization that I'm hoping will help you understand some key concepts about GSAP. And one of the most important things about GSAP to know is that every animation has what's referred to as a virtual playhead. Just like a tool like Animate CC or After Effects or Final Cut Pro might have a playhead to allow you scrub, animations in GSAP have a playhead too. So I'm just going to rewind this animation. Ah. What you need to know is that whenever the playhead of an animation advances, that's when GSAP is going to apply those changes to the properties that we want. Tweens in GSAP can be moved to any point in time. They can be played forwards, they can be played backwards, they can be paused, they can be restarted, and we can also do things to have them speed up over time and slow down. They're really quite powerful. And in addition to controlling tweens like this, we can also inspect them. And you'll see in the bottom right here that this current tween has its playhead at a time of 1.2, and that sort of information we can get programmatically. I'm not going to get too deep right now. Let's move on to the next screen. Here I want to show you that a tween can change multiple properties of a single object over time. In this tween here, we're changing the scale, the rotation, and also the fill color. So we've got quite a few different properties in that vars object. This is where it gets cool. A tween can change multiple properties of multiple objects over time. Here, we're not changing the code too much. You'll see that we're still selecting anything with a class of star. It's just that now I have three elements on my page that have a class of star. So this single tween is going to be able to control all of them. And you'll see that they're running perfectly in sync. Whenever the playhead advances, it updates the properties on all three targets. Here it gets really cool. We have a single tween that can animate multiple objects with staggered start times. You'll notice that the target is still anything with a class of star, but we've added this stagger amount right here, and that means that there's going to be one second between the start of each item. So as the playhead progresses to a time of one, boom, the second one starts, and then when it gets to a time of two, the third one starts. Staggered animations are extremely powerful in GSAP 3.0, and I can't wait to show you more about them. Next, I want to talk about my favorite 
favorite, favorite thing about GSAP, and that is timelines. A timeline is a container for multiple tweens. So here I have a timeline that contains a tween for the star, the yellow circle, and the purple square. Well, I can play that timeline, and as the timeline's playhead progresses, you'll see that it triggers the updating of each tween inside of it. So these are referred to as child tweens of the timeline. As I'm scrubbing, you can see that the time is changing in the lower right, so I can jump to any time that I want, I can reverse from any time that I want, I can tell timelines to repeat, I can set repeat delays, and I have all these advanced controls over this group of tweens. One of the most powerful things about GSAP timelines is its unique sequencing options. So you don't necessarily have to have one tween play directly after the other, you can have them overlap. So here you'll see that the square tween is happening while the circle tween is still playing. You can insert gaps. You can nest timelines inside of other timelines. It's extremely powerful. And what I'm gonna do is have a full lesson on the position parameter. I'm gonna show you how to build your own timelines in multiple lessons so that you can really harness the sequencing control of GSAP. So hopefully you're excited about what you're gonna learn. Let's go ahead and create our first tween. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more like it, check out my course, GSAP3Express at courses.snorkel.tv.